So we are live, um, not seeing dropped frames as of yet. Um, this may not be the highest quality video. I apologize for that uh, in advance and we'll probably continue to apologize for it <laughs> throughout the duration of the I refuse to apologize. Uh, but so far, lots of people saying uh, you, can, you can see us. Uh, uh, it's looking a lot better. Also, I'm, I down mixed John out of your right ears Hopefully, I'm in so both we'll your continue ears to make a, we'll uh, continue to make adjustments throughout the stream as needed, um, based on what uh, chat is saying. That's the housekeeping. But you guys, the important thing is that this was the season finale of Game of Thrones on Sunday night. Oh my hey, gosh, Ellie, was are it? you up to date? Oh yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> we're gonna otherwise, spoil. we're gonna spoil the shit. She actually had out trouble of it. watching it because the power was out in Austin, all over the place. She was yeah, right. Yeah. Power's gone. No oh. Game of Thrones. How is Joe the cat? Oh, he's just a little buddy. Aww. Little so, uh, we're, we, the we're reason we're not in a, a normal uh, place right now is we're in Las Vegas for the GameStop manager show. We actually left uh, in the middle of the hurricane. We, uh, Bernie and I ended up having to drive to Dallas and catch a flight because that flights out of Austin were canceled. So mm -hmm. it's been a little bit crazy. Uh, but but here everyone we are. in Austin is fine. We've had a lot of tweets come at us. Asking if people in the Rishith family are affected by Hurricane Harvey. Overall, we've been pretty unscathed in Austin. But yeah, we about had, we 50 had power miles to our east, it gets bad. Grounded flights, but that's a, a inconvenience in comparison to what a yep. lot of people are going through. Um, but we did manage to watch Game of Thrones. We watched the shit out of Game of Thrones. Oh, we yeah. just watched it. It was a regular watching. It wasn't like I watched intense the shit out of in any way. You know, I, I don't know where you were. I was having a great time. But... Well, this was the season finale. We don't get it again until, reportedly, by the way, it may not be back until 2019. I'm okay with that. Stop. Uh, well, Stop. No, I'm, I'm okay Stop. with that. I'm not. I All agree. Right. So your overall impression for the season was not great. It wasn't great. I was, and I will admit that up until the season began, I was getting a little arrogant, honestly, about the, the showrunner's ability to tell the tale better than George R. R. Martin. But then once they hit the territory where they didn't have the books anymore... That the boy, they really started to have holes in the armor for sure. It was the, the stuff they did, John. I think you described it best. Is it felt like a, a season in general that just had a lot of fan service moments. And when you had them all individually, for me, I liked them all individually. Like, I think there was a huge payoff with Drogon attacking the Lannister uh, wagon train. I think there was some cool stuff with the guys beyond the wall, like. Uh, Thormund and the Hound getting together and talking to one another. Tormund. Keep talking. What a Tormund. I say Thormund. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's one of those things, but it's like after a while, it's like you need more than just those moments. I think um, uh, I was reading an article about the episode today that uh, someone was actually praising the episode for this, but um, for them personally, they didn't say this is a, a view they would say everyone liked. In fact, they say they were the minority, but that the this episode this this season was a season of pacing issues mm -hmm. where they they were rushing a lot of stuff and just throwing a million moments at you of just these these payoffs and these fan service moments just constantly every single episode and it it lacked all the in-betweens that we had in all the previous seasons and all the the build up and the character developments and that kind of thing and that's what George likes to do and that's what George writes into his stuff is a lot of breath in between moments yeah, and that without that, it all just felt like there was no there. It was, it it becomes not a payoff because a payoff yeah. needs build. Well, um, the thing is, too, you talk about the pacing of it, and the pacing is attributed to the fact that they've declared an end game for this. They know when the the end date's going to be. Yeah, and so they're and, rushing. And so they're rushing, right? But at the same time, yeah, they're rushing, but we still have time to have five different scenes where Theon Greyjoy can have redemption and passes oh them God. up. And then eventually we get a t ten minute scene in the finale, which is probably one of the worst scenes I've ever seen in Game of Thrones. What was that crotch? I have kick. What it was, was a that? little slapstick. Wasn't that was it? beyond yeah. slapstick in a bad scene that was already felt like it was Fan written service. by a, a, yeah. a sugared up kindergartner. And then <laughs> it culminates in how does he win the fight? Oh, he ain't got no junk, so it doesn't hurt when the guy hits him two times and then he drops him. I'm like, right. Oh. See, can I just say that if a girl gets kicked between the legs and it's, there's nothing there but a pelvic bone, it still hurts. It still hurts. Yeah, it still hurts. Also, we didn't see anything about him getting his balls chopped off, right? As far as we know, his uniqueness is well, just now we know. he doesn't have a penis anymore, but the balls would still theoretically hurt, I guess. I don't think Ramsey would leave anything behind. I don't know. I don't think he's, like, going in and just <laughs> taking out the a, penis a, and stopping. He's a thorough castrator. 
Um, like, Ramsey's like, cut off his dick. Like, Lord Ramsey, do you want to take the balls as well? I was like, I'm not an asshole. Just, just, just one. Head. I'll leave one. Yeah. Um, what was he at the time? Was he, was it Rizzy Ramsey was, Snow? Uh, I think was he was name? still a yeah. Snow at the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah Ramsey Snow. Uh, and then he was legitimized and then uh, passed up in favor of legitimate son and then got all uh, stabby killy. Yeah. Dead. And Wolfie Edie, or Doggy Edie with his, uh, his new little brother. I will say this, though. I thought the season started off great. The bit with Arya and the house fray, that stuff was such a good opening to the season. And then it just kind of went da 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 da. Then went up in the fifth episode with the yeah. dragon stuff and then dropped back off again. Well, it was almost like they had two they had two paths for Arya, and they started off that one path at the beginning of the of the season, and then took her back to uh Winterfell, which kind of felt like, oh cool, they're all gonna reunite. But then it started this whole feud between her and Sansa that right. was weird and and was the that end, for show? I don't know because they were in rooms by themselves. Right. But in the end I, I like realizing like yeah the whole Peter like death scene was, you know, like oh okay, he Peter got what came was coming for him, but like I'd actually prefer if Arya was just still on her like her no name, you know, rampage of like yeah. t- ticking people off her list. Wasn't he on the list? Lord Baelish was on the list. Yeah, right? but yeah. Yeah. that was a really long time leading up to getting to Peter. Yeah, yeah. I think that though that it, like it almost felt like just ticking a box, mm-hmm. like that particular scene. But I will say that uh, Arya has seen Littlefinger paying off servants. He was talking to. Uh, Remember she, oh, she yeah, caught yeah, him yeah. talking to yeah. uh, one of the other Northerners, and so it may be that they did stage these entire performances. Uh, it may also be that I mean we got the feeling. Well, I I got the feeling for a while that Sansa was playing Littlefinger a bit because early in the season she made it very clear that they had no like she had no trust of Littlefinger, and anyone who trusted him was stupid. And then in these subsequent episodes, you see. Her confiding in him and yeah. getting all this advice from him, and I wasn't buying it for a second. I don't think they could be staged, those little moments between Arya and Sansa, because if you think about how one of them started, it was when Sansa found the faces. Yeah. And I don't, that think, was a I don't, weird think, I don't think Arya would say, hey, let's fake this thing, go look under my bed. Like, that was a genuine, like, what the fuck is this? Do you know what I did like in the episode was that finally someone... Um, when faced with one of these children of Stark actually telling the, their story, like, you know, like, Ar- like uh, 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 Arya keeps telling people she's, like, you know, part of the no-name the, the faceless, faceless men. Faceless men, and no one, like, questions what that is. Finally, when Sam walks in on Bran, and Bran's like, I'm the Three-Eyed Raven, he, he like, reacted normally. He was like, <laughs> I, I don't like, know like, what yeah, that he's is. He's like, oh, Thank that's, you. That's, Thank that's, you. That's what I would say. Cool. Like, what is that, Bran? Please explain that to me. Bran, by the way, that character has to die. Oh, you can't, please. You cannot have that character in a story where he can see everything all the time. That character is – although they don't use him ever. I did but. like I did like how they, they clarified that he can see everything, but he doesn't – he's not in a constant feed of everything happening. In fact, in that scene, when when presented with the fact that, you know, they actually married – Yeah, that, the that target, He, like, jumped to there. He's like, oh, yeah, you're right. Like, he's – constantly researching and looking into things but he doesn't he's not like you know hooked up to just a constant download of the internet in his brain but if there's right. anything like there's... he needs to know what to go for yeah he needs to go look but in the case of game of thrones like the game of thrones that they're all playing subterfuge is part of it and if anyone is presenting a lie or something like that he can literally just figure out if they're lying or not right. or tell the people around him like Littlefinger, he did it when he was being accused he said you held the knife to my uh, father's neck and told him I betrayed you, yeah. you know? I did, like, I was like, finally, he's useful a little bit. That was the it moment. Felt, the second I saw Bran in that room, I knew that this was a little finger. But the way that the scene. Bran has been used to up to that point, like, if that character said that in that scene, Sansa and Arya were going, shut up, Bran, shut up. <laughs> like, it's like, <laughs> yeah, cr- <laughs> sorry, that's our crazy brother just talking. Like, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, they also, the other use for Bran... In this episode, I felt like kind of wrapped up his usefulness as a story-based character, which is when he did sit down with Sam and they had their discussion. First of all, I was disappointed that Sam immediately had the recall of, wait, no, he is legitimate because he hadn't been paying attention to Gilly at the time. He didn't give a shit about that little detail. There's no reason he would have committed it to memory. I felt like that would have been interesting coming out of her mouth. Like, oh... Rhaegar. You know, I read an interesting thing about a Rhaegar. And, like, just let the cat out of the bag almost accidentally. Right. I felt like Sam immediately recalling 
the exact details of the annulment and the and remarriage was stretching it a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, Gilly should have been in the room. Yes. Yes. Gilly, but, Gilly should have had that moment. But have them finally having that conversation out loud is I felt like a little bit it was Game of Thrones for dummies. It Definitely. Was, it is Game of Thrones for people who haven't been paying attention. What is kind of But necessary. it's also yeah, it is necessary to finally get it out loud, but the way they presented it felt like, now, if you weren't paying attention, here's how it happened. I felt like that's, in a lot of ways, that was like the last couple episodes of the first season of Westworld, John, you're going to get mad at me for saying that, where it's like, you get presented these twists, and it's like, yeah, we know this. It's just like, they already, they already did that last season of Game of Thrones, where they did the whole Tower of Joy scene. The audience already knows it. In fact, I would say that most of the stuff that happened in the last part of the season, especially in the finale... Was we got all these like, look at this. It's like, yeah, we know. We, we know the Night uh, King has a dragon. Yeah. And it was like, th if they'd have waited to show the eye opening in the blue, they had to have that moment in episode six. They should have just waited to have until the dragon flies out of the clouds and the Night King's on it. That would have been like a get it. Yeah. moment. I'm calling yeah. bullshit on blue flame. Dude, I don't know what to tell you about that either. So, okay, I never thought the wall do coming think... down would be an underwhelming moment. What do we think? And, and it did. He's just like scratch he like burned a scratch in it and the whole thing came I don't down. know is it like is it super cold I I don't know is it on fire my only thought on fire my only thought <laughs> as I because this is like this is the the comic book bar, part of my brain you're trying to figure out what superpowers are while I'm watching something is it concussive because that's what it looked like it looked like it was just concussive Exploding. and it was just pushing through the ice which they did do a pan magic. shot of that uh don't just say that I know right? <laughs> it is it's magic. a dragon it's magic he's got fire coming out of his belly yeah uh that part of the wall was cracked and for some reason weak um and so uh, I think it's just concussive because it wasn't ice, because that would have been funny, is if he just he used the, the dragon for the first time, and the gets, wall just gets big. <laughs> <gets Yeah>. <laughs> and it's just the Night King like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, well. But then like, it, you would have been like, mm-hmm, and then you freeze the river around it, and that would have been an interesting way around the wall. Yeah. But it is, it's weird that uh, there was that whole thing came up. It was a wonderful fan theory, I thought, that Bran coming back south with the Night King's mark, mark was, on his arm. Yeah. was going to allow them to pass through somehow. That didn't come up at all, no, which just, I think is a just... shame because it was a like it was a nice little detail. It was a nice little touch. Uh, um, so we have a... Uh, which seems to be like a Smitty, common theme in Game of Thrones. I think Smitty Gamey, uh, Gaming asks, is Tormund dead? Um, that's going to annoy me until so. season eight. No, Tormund's not dead. No you know why he's not it, dead? Because the way the these showrunners likes... work is, do we like him? He's yeah. safe. Uh, does he have a lot of character development? He's safe. Did we see him die a violent death on screen? We did not. He's safe. He's but I guess alive I, still. The, the, this is, is Game of Thrones season seven. There was only a, like a couple of characters that died. You know, I and mean, season six, no we had, they, took out, they took out like 50 characters in one explosion. And then on this one, they did, uh, they killed Baelish, Thoros of Mir. Thoros of Mir, I guess. And then they did Olena. Uh, Lady Tyrell. They killed Lady Tyrell. Probably the only really Lady Tyrell was probably the biggest one, right? She yeah. was the one that and I the cared best. about the most. The way they, the way they presented and it. And she died off screen. She did. She got left with poison and then that was it. She did. I mean, it, technically they did also uh, kill uh, the, the two sands. They killed Alaria and they killed Tyene. They killed the, they killed the sand again. snakes. You could see no, no, at least no, one, one of them. The ones that got, the ones that were like on the ship. That is true. You know, so uh, yeah, at guys. least at, like three out of four sand snakes are dead. There's Sorry, like, Kiss of Death, Tyene, that's taken way too long. There's no way that the theory that Bronn's going to save her is going to pass at this point. There's That's just not happening. I don't know if time matters. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, even, like, even if they're, you know, the time traveling and, like, pa like or, or, you know, teleporting back and forth and everything, it's just been too much time. Um, if once that character's been off screen for that long, no one cares. But we do know that Ilaria Sand is still alive. I will say this about the last episode. Yep. This was the first episode where I actually liked Euron Greyjoy as a character. Where he was like, he saw the dead <laughs> really? guy, he's like, fuck this, I'm oh, out of yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm gone, I'm not dealing with this. But, but then they but then it it a subterfuge, that it, which is okay. That's a good thing. It was a well-played subterfuge. That it he was. was leaving to go get the gold company. There's uh, actually something really subtle about that too, I thought, which is that I, as he was saying it, I was like, oh, great emoting. Buddy, I was like, we really buy that you're scared, and it's because it turns out that he was paying lip service. Yeah. But at the time, I was like, wow, that's not that's a like he doesn't look all that scared. And now I was like, ah, oh, that's why. So that was actually a nice touch in retrospect. Yeah. That uh, that he, you know, your own Greyjoy is not an amazing actor. The guy uh, who plays him is, 
but you're on. I get you character saying the character's not a good, great yes. actor. I gotcha, gotcha. Well, um, I was, I was also. I mean, I know we're talking about to being disappointed in this episode. I mean, okay, the the season was fun to a certain extent. No, 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 no. they were dual moments. We're good. But I don't. But but Game of Thrones has never just been about the fun. It's been about like the. Almost like the fear of the show. Well, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, it's, it's complex characters. It's major characters, characters you like, almost being doomed. The characters that you like, the characters that are really try- striving and doing something, they're not safe just because they're a good guy. Uh, That's or, been... or because you like the character, even. Like in the last battle that we saw at the Wall, when there was attack on uh, Castle Black... Uh, Igrit died, and everybody loved that character. And the kid just like puts an arrow in her thunk, you know. And that's and it. Like, and that's that's it. She's well, dead. Yeah. That's what I thought was going to happen in that scene with Jamie and Cersei. I was like, is Cersei going to kill Jamie right now? Because uh, that would have felt very much like Game of Thrones. I know. In uh, in chat, Ruben Lopez uh, is saying that the dragon is now firing blue plasma, not fire. Blue plasma. He's joined the Covenant from Halo. Apparently. <laughs> uh, There's a lot of people who like uh, are comparing now the aesthetic of. The Army of the Dead and their dragon to uh, World of Warcraft. Yeah, because yeah. it's literally like uh, uh, what's his name, the the Lich King. Lich King, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it almost feels like it's getting less original as time goes by. And Game of Thrones, one of the cool things about that world is that it's always felt very unique. Yeah, and very very grounded. There's magic in it, sure. Yes, people are coming back from the dead, but the way it's all handled in universe feels very authentic it feels grounded it feels like everything's got a reason and this deep history and everything but and now we've you know got flying zombie dragons with blue plasma and you know it's getting more and more fantastical yeah. so that may not be everyone's cup of tea yeah and that's you know that's fine that's fine if they would add more boobs i would appreciate it you know just just like balance well, that cause out because we watched the first season again there's a lot of boobs so season. many boobs in the first season F- a freaking uh, Roz spends like the whole season just naked also john and daenerys getting together is like something that people have really like looked forward to the potential of that happening <laughs> ellie's face is not an impressed face. it happening for a long time and it happened it happened in like a montage of other stuff yeah. it did yeah it was just like yeah it was all just mixed in like oh we need to we need to do this too yeah. so yeah i mean you guys they, go bang you know I, I do feel like they've john been, was gonna was like this like that? like this i don't know is hitting a wall uh, they, they just, just, medieval times does she not have anything you down just, there you just okay. rub your dick up against things is that what you do yeah when well, you're an actor you have to wear one of those socks we're, oh, yeah. Yeah. we're, we're working on it yeah <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a learning process. Uh, the I do. There's one piece of foreshadowing in there that I feel like everything that's in the show now is a hint towards stuff that's coming in the future. Because unlike George R. R. Martin, who does have a tendency sometimes to start storylines and then yeah, someone will just die, or it just it doesn't necessarily mean something specific is going to happen in the future. Mm-hmm. The showrunners obey Chekhov's gun. If there's something in the show, it's because it's something else is coming in the future. And I think they that John and Daenerys had a discussion, and she's like, oh, I'm barren. He says, who told you that? And she says, the witch who killed my husband. And he goes, is she really that credible a source? Yeah, I'm telling you right now, Daenerys exists. is pregnant. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's probably going to be... It's, it's They they just accidentally made a baby Targaryen. Well, yeah, and then you're, we're going to see probably at the end of this whole thing, the Lannister baby and the uh, Targaryen baby then... Betrothed to one what, another, like wed to each other yeah. to like Unify wrap this the whole kingdom. thing up. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's I, uh, the Stark baby with the Targaryen, although he's not technically a Stark, but he represents the house with the Targaryens. Right, and the Stark Targaryen Lannister formed. Yeah, the season was and then the was mountain will just a lot of underwhelming broad strokes with some very fun single moments, like. Clegane and the mountain. Oh, the, the, at least we have the promise of Clegane Ball. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the Hound of the Mountain getting to have that little moment where they, they talk to each other was... Well, maybe not to each other. Well, Hound got to talk <laughs> to him. Like, I like that he got to say his, his, his piece to his brother, like, upon seeing him. And even be able to be like, you're uglier than me now. Like, that was like... He was threatening him, though. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. threatening to kill him, right? Yeah. yeah. You know I'm the one that's... You, you're not going to You've always known it's going to be me is going to yeah. come and do that. And I like that they had that kind of stuff going on. But look, when they showed the white to Cersei, and then she she reacts to it. Is what's his name? Quyburn goes Kyburn, up. Kyburn. Yeah. Kyburn goes up and gets the hand and looks at it. It's like, okay, here's the guy who's gonna explain why this is undead and the thing that Mountain is is not also a zombie. But no, he just looks at that hand for like a minute. It seems like on screen. And then that's it. Yeah. I saw a great meme the other day. Said, it said, find someone that looks at you the way that Kyburn looks at the dead guy's hand. <laughs> he was, See, uh, he was so fascinated. 
Uh, Denny Amunia says that uh, Cersei's not going to have the baby. It's not going to happen. Uh, I don't know if she's going to miscarry or what, but the the seer that she went to, the one who told her that that all of her children were going to die and and that she was going to her brother was going to kill her, also said she would never ha- like she would have three kids and that's it. Yeah. So she may like either either again seer was you know full of shit or whatever, or it's going to miscarry. There could be something that puts the kibosh on that. So here's the other thing too is that if. The, going all the way back to the beginning of the series, because we just watched season one, so I'm thinking about this a lot, and they reference it a lot, uh, even in this last episode, they talk about Ned Stark and the nobility of Ned Stark and how if you say you're the son of Ned Stark, I believe you'll keep your word. And John, okay. this season, has done things to keep his word. I don't know, something about the moment, the way they told it, the show, versus the book, I always felt like Ned Stark in the book didn't know exactly the story of Jon Snow. Like, he didn't know, but what was known died with him. Right now, in the show, they specifically say that Ned Stark knew that they were married and that his name was Targaryen. Uh, they don't necessarily. The they they don't say that mm-hmm. Ned knew they were married. Well, sort of. She whispers she tells to him, him the name. his yeah. name is Aegon Targaryen. Right. Uh. So the Targaryen part does imply the legitimate marriage. Also, but why is that a problem just... if Ned knew? Because that goes against his characters, like knowing information or being a man of his word he basically lied to everybody it's like true. robert and everybody that Maybe is that's true why it him so although much. she yeah she did make him give his word that he would protect him and he may have felt that he couldn't protect him if he was living as a targaryen in this sort of post targaryen world especially yeah. with robert around he you know he knew what uh, robert's mind was and like. the last time he saw Jon snow he said next time i see you i'll tell you about your mother Exactly. Yeah. And so I think that uh, he may have been trying to do that and just never got the chance to, you know, like maybe he's like saving it till he was a man and he was like old, you know, old enough and, mm-hmm. and wise enough and, and able to protect himself uh, and, you know, so that he didn't have to necessarily. So I, I get it, though, that he did deceive the entire world knowingly. Yeah. Yeah, just like everybody, let everybody believe a, a lie, you know? And even Bran says Robert's Rebellion is based on a lie. Yeah, can we just talk about that whole thing, by the way? So, Rhaegar Targaryen, uh, he gets his uh, his wedding to, his marriage to Elia annulled. And he marries Now, in the Lyanna book, there was, a, in secret. there was a tournament. He won it, and he rode past his own wife to give her a flower, right? Yes. That, and that was a huge moment that wasn't in the show, but that's one of the things that then kicked off Robert's Rebellion. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, it was that, and then that he had kidnapped and raped her, and that was Robert's whole justification for starting this entire war. Aside from, like, hey, Dorne's gonna be mad at us, in which case, why are you hiding her in a tower in Dorne anyway? Right. yeah. Why would why would you keep it a secret if you're saving your entire realm from a war because you married this lady? Yeah, I don't know. And you and you put a baby. in And it. you went through the trouble to and, get an annulment and, and make it official. And like, yeah, it's not kidnapping. Like she chose to marry. Why would you let a war be started on those grounds? Is the annulment mentioned in the books? It's not. Not well, no, because we're we're so far past the source material. Now. Pizza. Pizza, oh, pizza. At, at your so, suggestion. Yeah, we at at chat's we, suggestion we did in fact order a pizza. By the way, so we now have pizza. Thanks, chat. Thanks, you're, you're chat. You're paying for the pizza. Uh, no, it's not what you actually uh, it's oh, housekeeping. never mind. It's housekeeping. It's not our pizza. Now we're oh, sad. Oh, bullshit. Chat, I did, you're I, disappointing. I did put our, our sign out. I did put our sign out. Did you do that, Yeah, I did. I don't think that works for Oh, it fell, it fell off. Oh, it fell off? Yeah, it fell off when I opened the door for Ellie. Okay, well, <laughs> we never mind. Uh, so, we'll get pizza in a little bit. But why, like, I'm curious. Does anyone have theories on why... Rhaegar would have let this war be waged under false pretenses. All it would take is Lyanna coming out and being like, yeah, no, it's I don't like, think, see, I think not it was, forced, we're married. I think it's George R. Cool. R. Martin had like a better understanding of the fact, the how information is spread. Like the way, and, and the showrunners had moments in this season where like when Gendry and Jon Snow were talking to each other and they were talking to each other about their fathers, they were talking about them like people neither one of them had met. Like they were already passed into legend kind of a thing. But I think the showrunners, honestly, it's like they need to get to these TV moments of like, he's legitimate. Let's not have any doubt as to why he could be the heir to the entire kingdom of Westeros. We need to have everything checked off so that no one can refute it. Um, whereas George R. R. Martin, I don't think worries about that. And he's just like, no, he's he's the heir to Rhaegar's. He's Rhaegar's son, so he's legitimate. 
you know. Yeah. So the um, a couple of notes in chat that are uh, quite like, why good does notes. Jon Snow to be listed as, as as legitimate, but Gendry doesn't? He's still the son of Robert Baratheon. They're hiding him. He's still got the blood of kings in him. Like that's that's a character George R. R. Martin established. He's the bastard of a king, mm -hmm. but he's still very very fucking important, you know. And so they have to hide this guy away. And they, sp they spent three seasons hiding this fucking guy. <laughs> no, so. he's, he was rolling that whole time. Well, so was... a couple a couple notes from chat. One is that uh, that because Lyanna was promised to um, to Robert mm -hmm. that and they got married in secret and everything, that may have been why they hid it. But even afterwards, don't you just be like, it, once it's too late, you can't go back. Be like, I'm pregnant. It's definitely consummated. You can't annul this anymore. Robert There's would no still point attack. Of a secret. Uh, but I also, still think Robert is the character he still would have attacked, especially the guy he was that we never saw, that uh -huh. early guy. Okay. I think if he steals his wife or the person promised him, he's still going to fucking attack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he doesn't, but he also, like, wouldn't it be more difficult for him to convince people to follow him if they're like, Look, dude, she just wasn't that into you. Yeah. Like, um, do I really want to, like, fight and die because she didn't like you all that but, much? But there's... That's um, the romantic part of the rebellion. But the real part was the Mad King. That's true. Yeah. And that's the other uh, thing that I'm I'm sorry I'm not getting um, names in chat. Some of the text is a little bit low on my eyesight. It's not the most amazingest. But uh, the other element is that uh, the Mad King did kill Ned's uh, father and brother. Yeah. And that that was another element of it. So there, there were sort of the two arms to the rebellion. But if they had, if they had kept to the um, this king is batshit crazy uh, line of the rebellion, it, I, it, we would have come into a time much less turbulent. Did Littlefinger have something to do with that? I don't think no. Littlefinger was still a child at that point. Okay, he was uh, he was still quite young. Yeah. Well, no, well, okay, not a child, but he was very young. This is when because uh, Caitlin was promised was, to Brandon Stark. Yes, and then and then he was killed as part of that whole thing, and yeah, she burned. married Ned instead. Yes, no, yeah. Ned. Uh, he strangled himself trying to get to his father, who was being burned alive. Oh, got you. I okay, believe. I believe because he yeah like he was like all new stuff and strangled himself trying to get to a thing to get the fire, uh, wow. but. Regardless, pretty messy, but that was like, Catelyn's still very, very young at that point, and I think Littlefinger's younger than her. Okay. So, uh, I don't know that he had much to do with it at that point, but he's definitely proven himself to be a, a twat in the in the time beyond that. However, interestingly, uh, now that he's dead, he may uh, continue to serve a lot of purpose because Arya kept his face intact. Yeah, I think you said that we were watching it, right? Yeah, she, we just, she, went, she went she right across it. here. She cut, she, uh, Arya cut her throat, and as she goes, his face is fine. Like, <laughs> yeah, face is totally fine. It wouldn't make sense, that's how she would kill somebody. And Arya killing Maybe somebody that's is pretty, our pizza. It's pretty crazy. Arya's got a pretty he hefty body count at this point. Yeah, man, Arya's a killer. She um, so, uh, Blade GTR in chat says, uh, Aliana was promised to marry Robert, so Aliana ran away to, uh, marry Rhaegar. <laughs> Ned thought she was kidnapped and wrote with Robert to find... Her, and then only when she was dying did he uh, realize maybe that it wasn't a, a forced thing. So, um, you know, it may be that no one discovered it was too late, but why wouldn't, like, she was, if she was gone for nine months, there's plenty of time to be like, con was consensual. We definitely, um, you know, we we definitely have, uh, what is it, consummated the marriage. It can't be undone now. Yeah. It's too late. War is dumb. War's dumb. Please stop warring. Yeah, please, all over the place. please don't war just because of this. Yeah, but I think after the Mad King, you know, if the thing starts and you know the Mad King burns like two people and then you know they start like attacking each other, it's just like we see it in the show. Once that wheel starts turning, it's hard to stop it. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes war is something that just perpetuates itself. I see that more in Tyrion than anybody else. Like, well, yeah, I mean, look at look at the uh, the lengths they had to go to stop pizza a war between. Two sides in the midst of knowing that the whites are coming, the white yeah, walkers are coming. True, okay. like the lengths they had to go to stop that. Now, to to further establish the timeline, um, uh, TJ and McFadden in chat notes that um, Catelyn was pregnant at the time, so she had already married uh, Ned when this rebellion took place. So uh, his father and brother were killed earlier. Oh yeah, they could have actually started that rebellion like back at that point, but they didn't. She's pregnant with Rob. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, she's married not. to. She was well. She was promised. Yes, that's when she was carrying Rob. Okay. So, okay. Um, and he hadn't really done anything at that point. Yeah, honestly, it's like, I feel like I, I would love to see that prequel. I'd love to see the Robert Rebellion story from Game of Thrones. That'd be well, they're working on, they're working they're working on, on like four spinoffs, yeah. but they said they're not doing one for Robert Rebellion. Oh, yeah. Do you want to grab that? Uh, I think there's a chance maybe they'll do one for 
the Doom of Valeria. Oh, thank you. The Doom of Valeria would be a cool one. Um, I I wonder if we'll get what is it, Duncan Egg? Oof. Oh, thank you, John. Pizza. That is an interesting that pizza. That's a lot of cheese on that thing. Whoop. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, See, that's something that they changed from the books to the show is George R. R. Martin would have like 12 pages in a row of food oh they would gosh. eat. George, George R. R. Martin must have written so many chapters of the books when he was starving because it's all about like <laughs> breakfast in particular was always like a three or four page description. Well, have you seen it? The show did get something right though th this season oh. from the books. It's like uh, just, just like when I'm approaching the end of a book. I'm now like trying to figure out how many pages are left till the thing's over. Dang. You know, I'm doing that same thing with the show. So apparently, we're not getting a uh, Duncan Egg spinoff either. So I don't know what it, I don't know what the four they're doing is. I think Duncan Doom Egg of What's that? Oh, it's um, it's a sort of like a side story prequel. It's like a more light-hearted uh, short story that uh, George R. R. Martin did. That's in the universe about um, well, what's his name? To Targar is a uh, one of the Targaryens. Aegon, Aemon, I don't remember um, exactly. And Walter. Yeah, <laughs> Walter Targaryen, <laughs> and uh, and but I yeah I thought we, potentially we could get a spinoff of that of their adventures, but no, we apparently not. So I'm not sure what it is that they're going to work on exactly. I'm not sure that I care after this, honestly. So, I like this story. I like. Yeah. The, I like these characters, I like these factions, but I don't know that I need to watch four different spinoffs. There, oh, it's uh, Eamon and Aegon. Eamon and Aegon. There was a theory for a long time that um, <clears throat> Jon was a Targaryen. Came out to be true. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Daenerys is a Targaryen. There was a what? theory that, that the... She's a what? There was three dragons, there was a third Targaryen somewhere. Mm. But now that one of the dragons... Because in the books, there is. Yeah, yeah, there's another Targaryen. Claiming who's so, like, it's the white Speaking king. of this... <laughs> Speaking of this, um, oh, it's Duncan the Tall and Aemon Targaryen. That's what the that's what Duncan Egg is. So, um, the thing with Euron is Cersei has sent him across the Narrow Sea um, to Essos to get the Golden Company. They abandoned Daenerys at one point, right? Um, so the Golden Company. So, Daryon uh, yeah, well, uh, uh was the mercenary who was uh, uh, banging Daenerys yeah. when she Recast. was. Uh, Sucks when you recast Marine. the character so differently too, because you like lose track of the character. Yeah, and uh, then so she said, "I'm going across the narrow sea. You're not invited." Ah. Um, but it was essentially like, "Here, have a city," and so like she left them in a you know in a, in a wonderful state basically. Mm -hmm. And now uh, Cersei's going to hire them to come across and fight on her side. I, I, it's not going to happen, but one of the things I would love to see is they turn up and uh, Daria and Harris look, is like, what's up, Daenerys? And she's like, what's up? And then they just like look over at Cersei and she's like, well, shit. Thanks for the money, yo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's an ex-girlfriend thing at this point now. He'll, he'll fight. I'm going to beat up your dragon. That's true. She didn't invite him. Yeah. So. And we'll see. But the thing in the books is uh, the third Targaryen was part of the Golden Company, and that's how he entered that storyline. Right. Chat saying it's two different teams. Second Sons are not the Golden Company. Oh, mm. shit. You're right. Yeah. They were the You're Second right. Sons. That's, uh, that was my confusion. Yeah. You're right. Well, now the funny, Your moment's over. Now the funny interaction is going to be gone. God damn it. What if the, so, <laughs> what if the Second Sons will come after Golden Company? They'll be whatever that device that they've used, admittedly, a thousand times now in Game of Thrones, where everything's bad... Everything's about to fall apart, and something comes in at the last second to save the day. There's always those cavalry moments. They use sex dragons. Well, or, you know, the Knights of the Vale, you know, or Tywin Lannister mm. in the Battle of Blackwater, you know? It's just like, there's always somebody riding in when things look terrible in the yeah. show. Also, I don't actually count the dragons from the last episode as being Deus Ex Machina, because they they sent Gendry to get a raven to ask Daenerys for help. So, like, there is a chain of events there to try to get that help to get it's, those dragons into books. like into the scene it's so what many things would, happening what, what counted is dsx machina is cold hands showing up which i don't know that we discussed this in the last episode but that was one of the stupidest things ever should we should we ride double nah no time get on or Bye. how about the fact they revealed that oh yeah they can bring horses north of the wall they've done it a <laughs> thousand times how much easier would that whole thing have been if they brought a horse they all had horses you know and it's just like there's so much in that episode that was so convenient. They the they went to great pains to separate out this small little patrol of dead soldiers, and then they get in a fight. 
John kills the White Walker that's leading them. And they all oh, fall down. They all fall down and die while everyone else is fighting, except one dude that they got to capture, because they only need one White. So one of them, for, for whatever reason, inexplicably doesn't die when the rest of them do. And you could say, oh, well, maybe another White Walker raised him or whatever. It's, it just doesn't make any sense why they would go through all that trouble. And it's just like, just to make something super convenient. It's the, the season. Season is convenience. The season, the senior season is very, very convenient. Convenient yeah. writing. Yeah, and um, I think it's going to get um, worse next season because we only have six episodes to wrap the entire thing up. I think if they had kept the 10 episode season, this one would have felt there would have been less teleportation because you could have had those interactions on the road that were so great at really setting the tone for the world in the early seasons. You would have been able to have some of those quiet moments and character building and get, get to know, like, you know, you could have more than a couple sentences developing Thoros of Mir so that when you kill him off, people care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, he was, like, he was really cute and cheeky and likable, but you didn't spend nearly enough time with him to, to be heartbroken, yeah. unfortunately. Well, even the Benjen thing in that episode wasn't, to me, the most aggravatingly convenient thing. Or, you know, just... In, Misdirection. Tormund would have died in that fight if it was if it took place in season three or four. Mm -hmm. Also, it's like even before Jon Snow gets on the horse and rides away, he got dragged under the water by dead soldiers that were pulling him down to the bottom of this frozen lake. Yeah. No explanation for how he got away. Just like it's like, oh, the thing where he clearly died, he didn't die. Now he's alive and he's walking out where the soldiers are just gone and he just was like now out they let him go i guess or something this is like the fake outs with deaths are what i can't stand in this so, they do too many fake outs with death especially in a season where they have most characters die off screen um you know? so uh silly skater silly skater two in chat saying the white was part of uh when the night kings turned which is true it's when it's white didn't die but very convenient there's only one it was very convenient that in that group in that patrol group being led by a white walker who is controlling everyone who is with him there was only one that wasn't controlled by him, and that's the one that they managed to keep alive and capture. Right. It's just it's, you can you know, justify like, why he would stay alive when that White Walker was killed. There's other what what ninety nine White Walkers supposedly. Yeah, uh, yeah. There the there may be up to. So the theory is that the White Walkers are Craster's sons. Well, they showed that's the first thing we saw with the Night King. Right. Is yeah. that and they're um it, when he turns up to the Craster baby, it's he's got like twelve other ones with him. But the Craster has uh, bragged that he's sacrificed like 99 sons or like 100 sons, something like that. A lot, you know. That's a lot of sons. See, you're going to write, it seems like it'd be interesting because Gilly has a son that's one of Craster's sons mm -hmm. who wasn't turned. It makes it seem like that would somehow have some kind of play in there. But that baby is pretty much non existent at this point. Yeah, it's just there to be, play, play you know, no to be rocked season. every now and again. When, what also happened with the baby? I'm trying to remember this. What happened with the baby that they switched at the wall? Oh, so this was uh, Vince. This was um, back, and I they I don't think they did it in they didn't do it in the series. It oh, was okay. done in the books. Okay. Uh, where uh, yeah, it was uh, Mance Raider's, Mance Raider's son, son, and they made Gilly take uh, Mance Raider's son and basically like leave her own as a sacrifice. Right. Yeah. They left. The, they left. She left her baby at the wall. Right. Um, right. Which they which they the didn't. The yeah. That town. that storyline didn't um, eventuate in the show at all. Okay. Um, what else? There were... Alright, just to clear a thing up. Okay, let's clear a thing up. Matthew, do they hate the show now? It's just all hating on everything. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, no. no, so I mean, there's... I'm down a little bit, honestly. I, I want to say that I'm enjoying it, but say I it again. feel like this it was... a was... fun season. It was a fun season, but... It's... Fun only takes you so far when you... When the show has been six seasons defined of character development and story and and not so much right. just these payoffs after payoffs after payoffs because they lose their value it's like if you get the cheat codes in a video game can you still have fun in the video game sure but do you actually get this the yeah. substance from the video game no you don't actually get the experience that you're having prior and i feel like this season was the cheat code season and it was I, like and i do also think it peaked in episode five yeah like they, they the pacing of it they just the when drogon comes in and the Dothraki are charging across the Amazing pasture. Amazing scene. And Drogon comes over and they blast all those wagons, Lannister army outside of King's Landing. It's like, that was such an incredibly cool payoff moment to finally see that. We've all been waiting for that, you know? The charging army for with the years. dragon even the, overhead. Even the reactions. Years. Even so the great. reactions of like, of, of, of Jamie and, and Braun yeah. seeing this dragon for the first time and everyone just losing their, their shit was just fantastic. And yeah. uh, speaking of Jamie, uh, one of the more interesting uh, things that happened with this last episode was, first of all, uh, Cersei and Tyrion saw each other again 
finally, and interacted and had a private meeting in which she did not take the opportunity to kill him, uh, mm -hmm. which was, I'm, I'm still not sure why she didn't exactly. Uh, <laughs> I, maybe she realized she doesn't have a whole lot of family left. No, it's just family. That's it. She can't do it. She's so, such a part of who she is. But she's also tried to kill him several times already. I think she's put like a reward on his head that's like a little bit different than actually trying to kill him. You know? I mean, yeah, like, as, well, she was trying to get him deaded. Mm -hmm. In this, it's not like she was going to be wielding the knife herself either. She would have had uh, Zombie Mountain do it, but... Uh, zombie she, Mountain do. You know, trying <laughs> trying to get him deaded. Um, and she didn't... By the way, the mountain's got to kill somebody. Like, we're just being told this is a really badass warrior. Well, he's very tall. I know, and he's big, and I get that. But it's like, at some point, we should see him kill. He smashed kill. that one guy's head. Where? Well, Oberon? In the hallway. Oh, yeah, you're right, 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 when they were, uh... And just pushed him into the wall, and his head just went... That is true. That yeah. is true. He did kill somebody. So it was know. one act of in enormous strength with a small gesture, you so... Do, you do need that, you know what I mean? You need those moments where you show that he's a badass, and you just can't just say, this character's scary, and everybody's like, oh, he's scary, look out. Yeah, so, um, but it was interesting that Cersei didn't take the opportunity to kill Tyrion, and uh, not only that... She essentially handed him the information that she's pregnant. Right, but I think, but I think that was all her playing the game she needs to play. If like, and even Chad saying if she had killed Tyrion right now, right then, then everything would have would have. She was in a strategic window where Danny was not burning the city to the ground, and she could not ruin that window by, you know, getting her revenge on Tyrion, followed by dying herself because two dragons come in and just burn everything to the ground. That's true. Although she was, she was. Uh... Pretty savvy. She picked up on the fact that Danny only brought two dragons. Yeah, I think too. It's like after the end now of the sixth season or seventh season. I um, don't know like what I want to happen in the last season. Like I'm not looking forward to like oh shit last season. Uh, Cersei's now the the Mad Queen. You know she pulled this big move and now she's on the on the Iron Throne. And I can't wait to see still when like Jon Snow and Cersei are in the same room or Daenerys meets them and all these things that I want to happen. All those things happen this season. It's like next season, I'm just like my attitude going into it is like, I hope they beat the Dead Army. Like that's it. Like after that, if they beat the Dead Army, it's like all those interactions I feel like have already taken place now for what is the Game of Thrones. And now it's just like, well, it's because you just have to beat the, the Army of the Dead. That's Off true. Although I think that, uh, we, again, we've only got six episodes in the final season, so uh, fighting the dead is going to be a big thing, and the the double cross. So we know that Cersei's planning the double cross, that she, her, she's not letting the armies go north, and that she's got the uh, Golden Company coming in. But we still have to see the Golden Company come in and see the betrayal. Yeah. But that's not going to take anyone by surprise, because Jamie defected. And I thought that was a huge thing. That's that cool. That didn't get... Um, it didn't... I don't know. It's it's weird because there were so many different payoffs. It almost didn't have the impact that it could have. That Jamie just broke up with Cersei, he and he's been away. so pro Cersei this entire season. And this is a really that was a huge huge thing for him. She threatened to kill him, and he was like, "What you to kill me?" And she goes, uh, "Nah." And then he rides away. Don't you so also feel like he's going to be able to tell them like, "Yeah, Lannister armies aren't coming," so they're not going to be surprised by it. Yeah. But that breakup was huge. They also did a tremendous job this season of showing uh, that Jamie Lannister is an excellent general. And just a, He's he, a great combat general. They always established that he was an incredible warrior and swordsman before he lost his hand. But in this season, I feel like more than anything else, there was some of it with Rob Stark too, but I feel like in this season, they really showed how he, you can't outthink him on the battlefield, really. Unless, of course, you get the surprise, like the Dothraki and the fucking dragons. You have dragons. But even in those moments, he's like, look, these Dothraki, these are, these are bad motherfuckers. Like, he was as scared of the Dothraki as he was of the dragons, you know? I'm actually surprised when he rode off and it was such a cool thing that I was hoping was going to happen that did where they showed it snowing in King's Landing. Yes. Um, that to me is like, it's just like, that's of such an alarm bell for everybody that if it's snowing there. But um, him they, riding they off, I'd expect some, 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 some men to go with him, I guess. And now it's, but he's just taking his military expertise and going over to the other side, basically. Right. So he is essentially going to, I guess, lead the armies of the north or well, help them out in, help them out got... in some way. The, the question is, will, will Jon Snow be will he like trust him enough to handle yeah, the control of the northern there. armies because Jamie is definitely more qualified in terms of like waging war than anyone else to be leading the army but they have to trust him yeah uh so i think that's going to be that's going to be a tricky thing but no it's like still still love the show i'm just like curious like 
I don't. How many? How many episodes in the next season? Six. Six episodes in the last season. So they fewer, keep your attention fewer very long. even than the next yeah. season, uh, than than this one had. So that's gonna be. It's gonna be really, really. I think, just like beat, 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 beat. I think there was like a. It's, it's, to me, it's like there's a couple of things that happened in this in this season that I've been looking forward to for a long time. Probably the biggest thing is the White Walkers getting south of the wall. And it didn't feel like it was didn't feel as impactful to me. It's because they didn't build to it. Yeah, they didn't build to it. They just kind of they showed up. They're like literally cut to a scene with Thorman, Torment, sorry. And he's staring, and then you see them come out of those woods, which we've seen a thousand times and stuff. And it's like then they just knock down the wall. You mm-hmm. know, well, I get they had a dragon to do it, but um, you it know, does it's, seem it's like, like knocking down the wall should be a bigger endeavor than it was. This is a seven hundred year old gigantic magic ice wall. And it felt like it came down in about 30 seconds. It did. No, because it did. It came to, yeah, it came down instantaneously. It wasn't scaling of the wall. It wasn't have anything to do with the size of the army or anything like that. It just had to do with, they, they finally, they got a dragon. You know, yeah. and that's what they needed the whole time was a dragon. And the dragon yeah. breathed on it a little bit, uh, and then the whole thing fell. Like, and that's yeah, all. just like collapsed, you know. No, that said, I'm, I'm Inside looking, job. I'm looking <laughs> forward to the last season because I do want to see all these storylines wrap up, and I want to see the, the final conclusion, but... In spite of all the payoffs this season, I do feel like it was the most predictable, um, and as far as like personal emotional investment goes, probably the weakest one so far. Like, what do you think is going to happen? Like, what? Where can you make some predictions for season? My eight? predictions. Um, so I think we are going to. I mean, we'll defeat the White Walkers. Eventually, we'll defeat them by killing the Night King. Someone is going to. I think a bunch of them. Is are that gonna halfway make, through the season? Is that the final thing? Um, I think it's going to come. To episode four, yeah, I think so too. Uh, they're like two thirds of the way through, and they'll spend the, like the last. They'll spend in, like an episode, uh, you know, essentially like fighting back south, mm-hmm. and they'll have to get Cersei off the off the throne and kill her. But I think that they're gonna a bunch of them are gonna lead essentially a suicide mission to kill the Night King, and I think that could be God. Who's gonna kill the Night King? I think the, the Night, Night King, King. I think the, uh, prediction here. This is the, obviously we don't know anything. Prediction, I think the Night King is going to kill Bran. I think that character has to fucking die. I think, I think Bran's going to die. I think Bran's going to stay in Winterfell, and he's going to stay there because he knows the Night King will come for him and, like, let them get away. Like, something like that, where uh, Bran will get killed. He'll stay in Winterfell when... The, I think Winterfell will fall to the Dead Army. Bran will die there, and then they'll all be pushed south. And, mm-hmm. uh, and Yeah, we'll it's definitely going to be just a push down to, the, down to yeah. a somewhat of a final showdown in King's Landing. We also have not seen, and it could be in that scene in particular, where we see one of the main characters who died north of the wall coming back as a walker. That's one of the things that would have been Hodor being... so powerful to see yeah. that we didn't see would have been as they come out of the woods, see Hodor marching along in the middle of all of the the you know, the White Walkers would have been the cool thing is like though, that would have meant something. But or the cool thing is, Benjen, who we just lost. Yeah, the dead army understands though the psychological impact of that kind of thing. You mean like when they sent the kids against yes. the uh, the lady? Yeah, Arno? and, and why Jesus. he why he did that move where he raised yeah. everyone while they were watching. Well, yeah, watching them raise all of their dead people. He was know. really he was kind of showing off. You know, he was like, "Watch this, watch this, ready, ready." We also <laughs> honestly, it's like I we've seen his power grow. We have gotten this one piece of information that took about five seasons to establish, which is that Dragon Glass kills them. But beyond that, we really don't know anything much about the Night King. You know, the children of the forest uh, creating them is what we know. But there's, there's no, like, lore to the Night King. Like, there's no, like, what's his Achilles heel? You know, well, how, what can they do to— He can sense the three-eyed I mean, raven. I think, yeah. he can, I think he can die like any other White Walker. Sure, I, think I think he'll so die too. to that. And I think—so the theory— the, the, the going theory for the Night King and why they're trying to kill everyone is, well, one, because death is insatiable, but two, because he was created to fight humans. He was created to help the, the children of the forest fight in their war against the First Men. Well, they're being slaughtered. The children of the forest are being slaughtered. Yes, by the first and so obviously something went wrong. Night King is psychotic. Uh, they lost control. They allied with the First Men to fight them off. But, like, his initial, like, core... Was he was created to kill all the humans? Yeah. So I think that you know that essentially like that's why he's fighting towards that. But then also just at this point, oh, they're all crazy zombies, and he's their zombie leader. Yeah. You know they they haven't actually dug into the lore that much. 
I'm hoping that one of the books that Sam brought along will be useful for more than just having a conversation about uh, John's parents and that there's something in there that will help them to find the Achilles heel. They find it, they launch their suicide mission, they destroy the Night King. Once they destroy the Night King, everything else, everything else like falls down. They're okay, they go south, they gotta defeat Cersei, get her off the throne, and then uh, put, I don't know, John and Daenerys' kid on the throne. All right, John, March Madness, NCAA bracket. Who's in your final four? Who's gonna live and make it through to the end? I think the um, the unicorns are gonna be able to take out the um, silverbacks, and uh, <laughs> I think they'll do it in the fifth quarter. I think, I don't think Jon Snow makes it to the end. I think Night King kills Jon Snow and Daenerys kills the Night King. I think that's the way that goes. But I think it's Daenerys, Cersei, Sansa, interestingly enough. And then maybe, I think Sansa's going to live. Yeah. Jamie Lannister's my wild card. I don't know. I like the character so much. But, I love Jamie. Yeah. I don't think he's going to make it. I think he's going to sacrifice himself heroically somehow. I think he's going to kill Cersei. I would still love to see him. And they'll be the Queen Slayer and the King Slayer, you know. If they killed each other? If the twins kill each other? Mm. That'd be interesting. Yeah. If, uh, Cersei and, ja <laughs> and Jamie kill each other. Yeah, I can see, I can absolutely see John dying. Bran it's, it's pushes always, him off the as, wall. As long as Daenerys... <laughs> comes full cycle. <laughs> he pushes him off the wall and as, he dies. As long as Daenerys is pregnant, then it's like the bloodline lives on. Yeah. John manages to sacrifice himself heroically, which he's constantly trying to do. Yeah. So, we shall see. That is a meeting that I would like to see. Jamie and Bran seeing each other again. I mean, be that's like, been... And, a, and that and was be like, the event. So... Yeah. That started everything off, you know, in this series. I guess John Aaron dying was the thing, but... Um, uh, yeah, you just be like, so... How you been? Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice sled. Looks at <laughs> looks at his wheelchair. Yeah, Look, looking good, getting around. Excellent, yeah. excellent. You still uh, uh, climbing on the terrace? No. Okay. Yeah. No. All right. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a while before I get another season. Um. Yeah, I th I see the maybe like even the wildlings becoming permanently the Night's Watch. That kind of thing, something like that. Or unless maybe they don't need it if they defeat the Well, army. once once all of the White Walkers What's are dead, if they don't the want if they don't want to kneel, they just like head back north. Yeah, and the weird thing too is like it's like I don't know, like I keep looking forward to the end moment of the show. Like what's the moment like the end where you like know the thing's over, like that Lord of the Rings thing where they have like fifteen endings. But it's all gonna still They're be like, winter. Here's the ending, but here's the next ending. Like they'll get winter through. will end. You think winter will end with the death of the Night King? Well the I don't know. Oh no, I think I mean I think that's still like a cyclical like seasonal thing but, but what um, if it's a short winter? and this is, gonna be, this is gonna be a long one i mean though, is the education. title of the final book of game of thrones is um a, like a hint of spring or something like that no is it okay or like a promise of spring something basically just like the a promise of spring to come to the end. yeah yeah so maybe it'll be like the you know how you get the snowing in king's landing maybe it'll be like the first blade of grass or like a flower opening Please. that could actually be a good ending yeah, like something in the, in the middle of the snow, like spring, promise of spring coming back. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah, thanks. All right. Cool. Um, also, is Arya going to complete her list? Mm -mm. You don't. You don't think? Do you think she's going to be pissed when someone else kills? She's not my final four. I just don't like the character, and honestly, I've never really liked the character. Nah. I think I've, she's or she's gone through like these crazy ups and downs. Yeah. Like I thought that when she was going through the whole faceless man thing her story was about to get super badass and mm -hmm. now she's home and she's her sister's thug. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I just like, I don't really understand the full arc there. Like, you know, I, I like though that she is very clearly a badass and a, you know, good swordsman and everything else. That scene with Bran of Tarth this season was really, really cool. And, uh, but I don't know. I just like, I don't feel invested in Arya as a character. I never really much have. Speaking of Brienne, uh, her love triangle, is she going to end up with Jamie? Is she going to end up with Tormund? Are they going to make gigantic babies? Brian of Tarth? Yeah. I think the thing with her and Jamie is in the rearview mirror at this point. Yeah, I, I, I did like seeing them. Torment. I did like seeing them interact again. Yeah. I also I like seeing the Hound and Brian interact. But it's like I said, it's like all those moments. I really like all those individual moments. Mm -hmm. You know, but then like John said, at the end of it, they don't really add up to no. you know, this was a micro season, not a macro season. It's a lot of the same criticism people have of um Zack Snyder's directing style, that he's really good at creating moments, but he doesn't create these broad stroke stories that all have a, a connecting element to them and 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 carry the audience through them and so the, it's not to say that you can't be a successful filmmaker by creating great moments Zack you Snyder's can, very successful Game of Thrones is successful 16 plus million people watching the, the season finale that's not failure that's very good success but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily a well-crafted piece mm -hmm. sure 
I mean, again, I think that they had a lot of really great moments in this. I think they just came almost too quickly, um, and too close together to take that moment and really absorb it and to, to have the kind of impact that some of the big moments have had in the past. Uh, we lost a massive house this season, a very shoot, important one. The phrase just poof like that. Not the, the Tyrells. phrase Tyrells. Oh, and <laughs> the phrase the Tyrells. Yeah, yeah. We lost, like a lot of uh, houses fell this and season, but you don't even it's think almost about like we it. didn't it's get... It's a major thing. Yeah it's, in, yeah, it's in the rear view, but the next episode you're like off to whatever other thing is happening. So yeah. again, it's almost like too much of a good thing. Argu arguably Dorn as well. Right, they're out and of the mix. They're kind of out of the mix. Yeah, now as so, well, so. Uh, yeah, so they lost Dorn, they lost High Garden, they lost uh, the the phrase are all gone. Mm -hmm. that's, Bales somewhere. That's that's a <laughs> lot of uh, consolidation of uh, of power. Yeah. In in Westeros, I think the stream is dying. All right, all right, all right. Well, we also Dragonstone way better throne room than King's Landing. Agreed. You can tell the budget in the different seasons. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I like oh, that yeah. throne way better. All right, so uh, that's it for this season of Game of Thrones. We'll do next season whenever it actually airs uh, and uh, do all of our theorizing. I think we'll do another one of these. Like, I w I'd love to do an after show like this when Westworld comes back. It doesn't come back till the spring. Um, and then yeah. maybe do some one-offs for other stuff as it happens, like when Stranger Things Season 2 comes out. Mm -hmm. Then maybe like a week later we can do one. Uh, just for the the whole season, something like that would be a lot of fun. Got yeah, I agree. All right, go Jamie Lannister. Go I'm Jamie Lannister. I'm rooting for you. We're we're all Team Jamie here. and Jorah Mormont. Oh, Jorah is Jorah is gonna Jorah is gonna sacrifice himself to. to I know he is. No, he is. One hundred percent. You know he is. Okay. All right. This is all right. We're gonna duck out, especially because our internet went blip anyway. Yep. I think we just um, all. But let us know your theories. Um, if you're leaking things from leaky things, you're a great big old jerk. Uh, so don't do that. And, uh. Bye. I like you. Something unplugged.